<clears throat> Welcome to Zero to 60. It is Friday morning. Great Friday morning. Nice and chilly outside here in the great state of Colorado. I am your host, Matt McChesney, as always, here on the Believe Network. A uh, little business to take care of right off the bat. Our, our good friends at Bet Online, you know, they, they keep the, the engine going here on Zero to 60, and we are damn appreciative for it. Uh, the tournament is here. Bet Online is your bracket headquarters for this season. The best bracket contest out there. The odds, the lines, and every game and every round right up to the national championship. The final four for the women uh, and the men start this weekend. It is going to be awesome. The women's game is getting more best than the men's game. Peyton Clark is killing it. Uh, you can access the most uh, up-to-the-minute wagering information, get all of your stats, all of the services that you need to make good bets. Man, Bet Online has it. Um, <clears throat> if you go in today, all right, on that action, remember to use the promo code BLEAV, B-L-E-A-V, and get a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online, the game starts here, and uh, they are the title sponsor for Zero to 60, and we sure are uh, appreciative of what they do and how they do it. So we're rolling here on Zero to 60. We have a lot to talk about this morning um, concerning, you know, college football, Colorado Buffaloes, Coach Prime being uh, kind of salty uh, at the at the players for fucking around in class. I mean, it's college athletes, so we'll talk about that. Uh, it's a little bit different when you're actually being paid to do it. Uh, these days in its profession, you know, but at the same time, we, we can have the conversation about, you know, why are they going to class in the first place? If this is just a business, they should have that choice. Uh, so we'll talk about all that. The super conference, you know, the college football going to an 80 team super conference and then maybe regulation. So like if you're terrible, you could get moved out. Another team would get moved in. So that's interesting to say the least. I mean, look, we are all over social media at Six Zero Academy on TikTok. Uh, on uh, Twitter, on Instagram, or X, whatever you want to call it. Um, check out the 6-0 body bag, 6 equipmentcom uh, Those are flying off the shelves. We're about to order another round of them. Uh, we even got a special one made for Coach Prime that I'm going to take up to him. Um, at, uh, other than that, we're on Twitch as well. We just got on Twitch. We're really excited about the future of uh, 6-0, the show, the gym on Twitch. We were in here at 5 a.m. this morning. The guys were getting down. Uh, we had a lot of engagement this morning on Twitch through that. So that's pretty cool. You can watch all the workouts and everything we do in here rather than just getting, you know, a minute worth on Instagram. You can get the entire 6-0 experience in here, the entire workout, all the commentary, everything you love, hate, controversy, whatever. And we'll try and engage as much as we can while I'm coaching. Uh, so, you know, We'll, uh, we'll just keep this party going, baby. So go follow on YouTube, like, and subscribe. We really appreciate you. And do the same on Twitch, please. Like and subscribe. Uh, and look, I I'm new to this whole Super Chat and Sup thing. So if you'd like to contribute and you'd like to, to, to get in on this and, and you like the show and you like it where it's going, we would love uh, for you to get involved in there, too. And we'll give you some shout-outs and, uh, and have some fun and get down here on Zero to 60. So let's get this motherfucker going. Happy Friday, ladies and gentlemen. Let's go zero to sixty. Matt McChesney here from the lab at Six Zero uh, Football Academy here in Parker, Colorado. All right. So if you got questions in the comments over here, start firing them. Let's fucking go. Smoke Andretti already. Let's go Buffs. Goddamn right. So it, it's going to be a great year for the Colorado Buffaloes. Off of the uh, Twitch feed here, <clears throat> Big Quiznos, my man. Are you familiar with defensive end Jonas Ellis of UNLV? Dude's a monster. He is a good player uh, out of U Utah. I thought you said UNLV. Yeah, he's out of Utah. That's what I thought. Good. There you go. Um, he's a hell of a player. Uh, you know, it's there, there's another guy named Luther Ellis that played at, <laughs> played at Utah back in the day that he reminds me of a whole lot. And, you know, he, he's, a, he's a great defensive end. He's got a motor. So that's pretty – I mean, I, I don't know what the question is other than that. But, yeah, I am familiar with the young man. Big Matt is a GOAT. Thank you, Smoke Andre. Appreciate you, bro. Um, so, yeah, let's get into this shit. Any questions you got about Coach Prime or the Colorado Buffaloes, let's get it in uh, and, and talk about it. They're in the middle of spring ball right now. And, look, I – from what I'm seeing from Shador, especially you know, Travis Hunter breaking people off on the field and being the best player there. But really what I'm most excited about is the 
defensive and offensive lines and how they're gelling. Coach Loholt's doing a great job with the O-line. Obviously, you see Coach Sapp, who is just – he's the highest-paid graduate assistant in football, which he should be. Um, it, it's paying off. There's a lot of attitude on the fronts, it seems. Jordan Seaton looks like everything that you thought he was. Uh, he'll probably be a top-five pick when it's all said and done. Uh, you know, the, there's a lot of competition right now. The right tackle competition is is intense. We'll see if Savion Washington can win that job or if he's going to be in the transfer portal come spring. You know, I, I love the way Coach Prime is doing things for the simple fact that he's bringing in four stars. He's got, you know, the big tackle. I can't remember the kid's name, but he was there yesterday. Uh, he he looked very intriguing, uh, big, some bitch. You know, they've got really big time players coming in, four and five star kids. And that's what I was talking about the other day. Like we had a, a question from a parent uh, that his kids go to uh, Cherry Creek out here, which is a dominant program in Denver. And they were asking, like, why doesn't why doesn't CU and Coach Prime really recruit Colorado? And I'm not saying they're they're never going to recruit a kid, but I am saying that when you have access to four and five star players from Florida and Texas and all these meccas, they're going to go after those kids first because honestly, that's who you need to win. When I played at Colorado, bro, Barnett and New Heisel, because I was offered by New Heisel originally, but I played for Gary, they would assault, assault Texas and California and Florida. I mean, Cordell Stewart from Louisiana, like all the all, every good player that I played with that had any swag is from, is not from Colorado. I mean, let's be real. I mean, we had some dudes on Dan Graham from Denver, and I'm he, from there, and like we got some guys, honestly. But when you talk about like just greatness. Lawrence Vickers is from Houston. Ryan Ewu is from Houston. Like the Andre Gerard, Victor Rogers, they ain't from Denver. So you, you've got to find the right guys in Colorado to build around, but then you've also got to go branch out and get the elite guys all over the country. See, you did it in the past. Coach Prime's doing it now. I think it's, I think it's going to work and it is working. I mean, the, the, it's ridiculous how well they are recruiting based on the, the last 20 years at CU. I mean, I hate to say this, but I was a senior on the last team that won a goddamn bowl game at CU, and that's not cool. That's not cool. Smoke Andretti, uh, how do you like the energy of practice? As you know, JB is feeling differently. I like it, though. Well, look, Coach JB is just a, a hating son of a bitch. I love him. He's my brother, but he's a fucking hater, uh, and that's his job. He's a quarterback, and nothing's ever good enough, and he's a head coach, so you have to anticipate that he's going to hate like that. Um, and that's fine. It, that's the way he, he would motivate if he was a coach, too, guaranteed. And it would work. I think that the energy is fantastic. I love even if it's fake enthusiasm. I want some fucking. I want some enthusiasm. I want guys that look like they like football. I mean, if you can't get psyched up about being at, at practice and being in pads and being able to tattoo my some motherfucker, you why are you out here? So I used to hate as a player, especially in college and, and the pros. I didn't really get it in high school. There's not a whole lot of Dario's in high school that, that you notice at least because you don't know the difference, but. In college and the pros, the guys that would come into practice and sit there and be like, hmm, I have to go to practice today. Oh, my God. It's so hard. It's hot. And coach is going to yell at me. And I'm here to go to school for free and play football, but I don't want to do it anymore. Ho, hum, hmm. Like, man, you are just, you're killing me here with this negativity, dog. Like, you got to get that shit out of here. I don't have any fucking space in my head for that kind of shit. I already have to battle with my own demons. I don't need to hear you you know, bitching about the fact that you have to go play football today. That's the best part of the fucking day. Lace up, put that mouthpiece in, run through a motherfucker's chest, even if he's your best friend on the team. Everybody needs to take a, a page out of Sh a Shiloh's book because he is a hitting some bitch. He is downhill in a hurry, man. He's going to have a huge fucking year. So I love, 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 love the intensity of practice, and I think it's fucking needed. <clears throat> From East Coast Cav, we appreciate the donation, brother. Thank you very much. Super Chats and Subs are open on Twitch and on YouTube. Shout out to you. We just had an earthquake here in the Northeast. What the fuck? Just say a prayer for it. I got shaked like P. Diddy in a court case. <laughs> the earthquake's not funny, but the P. Diddy shit is funny. Woo! Uh, what the fuck? There's an earthquake in New Jersey? That's, I mean, look, dog. If you think the world's ending, then there's a lot of <laughs> there's a lot of signs. Follow your signs. Um, that sucks, man. Prayers out to to the East Coast. Hopefully everybody's okay. Uh, New Jersey earthquakes. That's that's a new one. Uh, but but yeah, I, we appreciate the donation, brother. And <laughs> shaking like 
uh, P. Diddy at the court case. So I was I was up at Crisp yesterday getting getting fresh. I know I look good. I got the man bun and everything. And uh, my man, Joey Romero, obviously, he's been cutting my hair forever. He cuts my boys' hair as we always go up there. I love it. Chris Barbershop is the shit. Uh, he's going to be on the podcast here later. You know, Joey knows everybody, bro. And I, I love going to barbershops. I can't go to sports cuts. And I can't let white people cut my hair. Facts. So I... <laughs> I love going there because it's a real barbershop. There's real community. There's curse words on the radio. There's a bunch of tatted up fucking dudes with attitude. And, you know, there's bad bitches up there that go in there and cut hair. And everybody loves each other. It's awesome. Everybody's talking shit. And that's what a barbershop is supposed to be. And if you if you don't agree with me, get in this motherfucker and talk some shit on why you don't think that's the way it is. There's not a lot of real barbershops in Denver. If you know of any others, please let me know. I'd love to hit them up. But I've been going to Chris forever. <laughs> We're in there yesterday, dog. And Joey's calling P. Diddy the diddler and shit. And it, I, I know it's nasty and he's a sick fuck, but dude, it was so funny. The fucking diddler out here just, can you imagine? I watched stand up the other day. I can't remember the comedian's name. He's, you know, got a mustache and he's talking about how like Diddy walks in or you, you go to Rob Diddy's house and you walk in and he's sitting on the fucking sofa naked with Meek Mill on his fucking. <laughs> Lap and he's petting him like a Maltese cat and shit. And you turn around and try and leave as the robber, and the door locked. And all you hear is, We ain't going nowhere. You ain't going nowhere. <laughs> I was dying, bro. So, did he set him up for this shit? And we are going to roll with it because I think it's fucking hilarious. So, <laughs> uh, thank you for bringing up P. Diddy, bro. I really appreciate it. That shit is fucking funny right there. Um, so. I <laughs> continue to get in on the comments here on YouTube and Twitch. We really appreciate you. The set, the 4.7 mag here, uh, earthquake in New Jersey, uh, red man, 0610. We appreciate you getting in on this, the 4.7 mag tune in New Jersey. I, I don't, uh, that doesn't say New Jersey, but whatever. Um, that's, that's, that's large, I guess for New Jersey. I didn't think they had, uh, earthquakes there, but Hey, fuck man. Uh, so back to Colorado and the bus, <clears throat> and everything going up there in Boulder. Look, you have to you have to understand. Like spring ball is fun. You get to go out there and beat the shit out of your buddies. It's very competitive. The, the spring game is going to be awesome. You got you you got fucking Little Wayne coming in to perform again, which bummer. Uh, like I get to go see Little Wayne. That's fucking terrible. Uh, I can't wait for that. That's going to be incredible. He's that that might be the best MC ever in my opinion. And Coach Prime loves him as well. If you watch the interview with him. I asked him about his Mount Rushmore hip hop and he went from Little Wayne to Snoop to Luther Vandross and then uh, Keith Sweat. So I don't know if Luther and Keith are in hip hop, but whatever Coach Prime says is what we're rolling with. So the fact that he brought up Luther Vandross, that shit was fucking funny too to me. Um, but but look, the spring the spring practices have been intense. It look, the new guys they brought in in the portal look to be bringing some attitude. Jordan Seaton is the real deal. Like, Jordan Seaton's a bad motherfucker. That kid can play, dog. He is straight, like, intensity. He'll finish somebody. He is not afraid to talk shit, and he's a young cat. And that usually doesn't happen with a lot of young guys. So this kid's got real swag and great feet, good hands. And he, I think that he's the kind of the kind of guy that, you know, plays two, three years in, in college football, and he's gone, and he should be. You know, I think he might only have to play two years in college football. They need to look at that rule. There's no reason to stay, especially in a business atmosphere, unless he can really get paid the way he would to be in a first pick. He might make more money in college, honestly. We'll see. But Jordan Seaton is a bad fucking man. So building around a kid like that and being able to get him opens up the doors for all these other cats. I mean, the, the four star they had up there yesterday, of course, I can't remember his name because I can't remember anybody's fucking name, but he's another big eater. He's another big you know, big, aggressive, long-limbed, some bitch that you can put out there that can reach block, pass block. He can do everything you want, and he's got some fucking grit and attitude. And Coach Prime wants that. He wants guys fighting in practice and getting after it. No cheap shit, but a little chippy, that's cool, and that's what he wants. So you know damn well that they're not going to be in in the, the business of allowing the timid in the weekend to Colorado. And let's be real, all right? The pride and tradition of the Colorado Buffaloes will never be entrusted to the timid or the fucking weak. That's the way that I feel, and that's the way Coach Prime feels, and it's I'm with it. With it. That's on the wall at that place without the curse words. Uh, but, you know, like that is the mantra right there, baby. So we just need to know what we're talking about here. So I also want to talk about this a little bit, okay? Watch this, 
Okay, watch this and let's get your opinion on it because uh, I, I think it's kind of funny. And I, I was a terrible student in college, terrible. I was always on probation. I hated the electives. I hated school. I just wanted to play football. I wish I would have done it a little differently, but I got a degree right there on the wall. It's a history degree. I guess I can go be a teacher and shit. That'd be cool. But I'm glad I got it. It was the first McChesney to have a, a college degree. That's all cool. It's a different era for me. Now in the NIL era, you know, I think <laughs> you might have a little bit more fuck around in class, and I'm not the only one. So check this out. Uh, this is Coach Frime and a professor who emailed him, and he's reading the email to the, to the, his teammate or to his team, and he is not happy. Check this shit out. This semester has been extremely challenging for me as a professor. I have never felt so disrespected in my 10 years of teaching. Students do not follow even minimally, and it slows down my class so much. They make it clear that they don't want to be here, and they have very little personal responsibility, making me responsible for their <laughs> grades. For the students that do want to learn, it has been a bad experience as well, since they have to work on breakout rooms, and the distracted students do not bring anything, anything, <coughs> anything to the table. You just gotta eat. He got nothing to the table, but knives, forks, and spoons. I often have to repeat the same three and four times because student athletes are present, but not really in class. You present, but you ain't really there. You on the field, but you ain't doing nothing. You in a relationship, but you ain't got no love. You at the mall, but you ain't got no money. Got a lot of ability, but no darn talent because you don't think. This is from the teacher. Now, what Bob? This semester has been extremely. Sorry, fat fingers. We appreciate everybody's uh, correspondence here and getting in on this. So please continue to give us your comments and everything. I'm trying to figure out this new computer, so bear with me here. But look, how you do one thing is how you do everything. And I wish I, you know, talking to young guys now. It's important. If you're going to go to class, you might as well learn, not just sit there and fuck around. But at the same time, that is kind of, you know, the, the point of this is him calling out his team in front of everybody. I love that. I, back in the day, every coach that's worth the shit back in the day would always give the 8 a.m., you know, call outs. This is not what we're looking for. Just put up all the bad shit and get, get it over with so we can focus on the good stuff the rest of the day. I, I think that Coach Prime doing this and putting everybody on blast, essentially, in the class, that's a good thing. It makes people accountable. Now, in the NIL realm of professional football, which what which is what college football is becoming, this is why when I talk to Coach JB about this on his show, every time we talk about it on this show, Zero to 60 here on the Believe Network, we really appreciate everybody. Like and subscribe, YouTube and Twitch, especially on Twitch. Go like and subscribe, for real. You know, subs are open, super chats are open, get in it. When when you're talking about now in the NIL era, this is why I think that they should pay the players and the players should pick, do I want to invest some of this money into school and go to class or do I just want to be a paid employee to play college football here and then keep the money? And then they don't have to get their degree. They're just there to play football. Now, I know that might be controversial, but you know what? If they would have paid me my scholarship back in the day and given me the option, I bet you if I had to pay for my own school and I saw where the money was going, it would have been different. When I got a paycheck in the NFL, it felt way different than a stipend check. And I don't know why. I don't know why. I respected my scholarship. I'm glad I got it. But you know, ego is a funny thing when you're an 18-year-old kid. I, I didn't think about it like, wow, what a blessing. I thought about it like I'm a bad motherfucker and I got 30 scholarship offers and this is the one I'm taking. And that's that doesn't change with this generation. They think the same way. It's why I think kind of the scholarship is it, – it's, it's a weird thing these days because you can get NIL scholarship. You can go full ride somewhere – and have a donor pay for your scholarship because it's all scholarship donors, I guess. But you can have an NIL scholarship that has nothing to do with the university and you don't have to abide by the rules and everything else that's in the university scholarship. You're just on an NIL deal scholarship that sends you to school for free and puts money in your pocket. And now you're still on the team and still balling and still don't have to pay for class. 
So that that shit, that shit is, you know, fact. It's what it is. So I don't know how everybody feels about this, but, you know, there's, I, I can't really sit here and say I wasn't a good student. I just didn't give a shit. I'm a smart guy, obviously. I can, you, I go to class. I'm going to figure it out and get a good grade if I push myself. But as a student athlete, I never understood why the fuck I had to take electives. I'm on scholarship, dog. I'm not paying for these electives. So I guess my hard-headedness and constantly questioning everything and being kind of a prick, uh, that probably didn't help the situation very much. I know Coach Barnett wishes I went to school more, but hey, man, I never missed any I never missed any games because of it and graduated, and I'm happy about it. So Coach Wilson and Coach Barnett, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. <clears throat> my man Mike Bundy's back in it. Thank you, brother. We appreciate you. Bree gets 90%. Matt gets 10 Uh it's 50-50, homie. Don't get it fucking twisted. <laughs> so, keep this going here. Another one from Bundy. The NIL scholarship is brilliant. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Let's see about this one. <clears throat> from Chris E. I'm taking the scholarship money. Scholarships are 45 k plus a year. I can enroll in an online school summer for 3 k a year. Everyone don't need... To go brick and mortar school, bro. This that is a great fucking point, Chris. Thank you for getting involved. That's true. It's true. Degree's a degree, dog. Like I, I don't. My, I'm not successful because of my college degree. I'm successful because I'm a fucking hustler. I got a picture in my wall, of fucking Sean Carter, right there that says, "I'm not a businessman." Period. I'm a business, comma man, because I am the business. So you know what I'm saying? Like the the degree is just there because I had to get it. I, if I didn't have a degree, I would still be the same guy. So a college degree these days is not the same as it used to be. If you're going to be a lawyer or a doctor or whatever, you probably need to go to graduate school and all that shit. I'm not saying it's not important. I am saying that you don't need it to be a multimillionaire, to be extremely successful, to be a businessman, to own your own business, to be a fucking hustler. Your college degree doesn't get you up in the morning. It doesn't put you to bed at night. It doesn't set your agenda. None of that shit. Back in the day, the lie, like, oh, my God, you have to go to college to be successful. I don't know how all of our parents who didn't go to fucking college got conned into that fucking lie. But that's how they get the entire country stuck in student debt. So college, if you're not there for the right reasons, is just a party, dog. It's a chance to roll blunts and do keg stands and do wild shit and just have fun. I'm glad I went. It was fucking awesome. I'm just saying it's changed significantly for student athletes. And Chris E had a great fucking point. Again, check this out. That's that's a really good point. You put 42K in your pocket because you're going there and go to Red Rocks Community College right down the fucking street or whatever. And that that might be a good idea, man. I mean, do all everything online because I think a lot of them just do online now anyway. So we'll we'll see. The education is important just in case football doesn't work out. Plus, they can fall back on it after Pro Bowl if they need to from the smoke. That's true, but I just talked about how you don't really need a degree to have a hustler's mentality and a mindset of, I'm going to go make money. Like, look, The Departed is one of my favorite movies of all time. And there's a famous line in that movie where he's, you know, one of the one of the hitmen is fleecing one of these dudes for, you know, his weekly toll that he owes uh, to the Jack Nicholson character. And he walks in there, he's like, I don't have the money. And he busts his ass and drops him. He goes, what do you mean you don't have the fucking money? This is America. If you can't make money, you're, you're a fucking douchebag. So that's the way I feel. Like, you got to hustle. And I, I don't really care if you've got a college degree. A hustler is a fucking hustler. So look, should the kids have to go to class? There's the question. What do you think? If football's a business, when are we going to allow college football players to have the same, I don't know, the same uh, options as baseball, hockey, and basketball when they are all, you know, well, maybe not basketball, but hockey and baseball for damn sure. I mean, they, those, those when they're in the, the minors in those places, you know, they are in no short terms, they're pros and they don't have to abide by all this bullshit. That's just a fact. So just keep that in mind. Hmm. Consider plugging in your device. I forgot my charger. That is going to suck if we run out of power. 19% remaining. Let's see what we got. Okay, we're 25 minutes in. Fuck. 
All right, so <laughs> we roll here on Zero to 60. Now, also, we've got to tell you about one of our new sponsors here on Twitch, Factor. All right, you get 50% off your first box of Factor. They're wellness shots for life using my link here. Two free wellness shots per order with any active subscription. Go on uh, right there on Twitch. You'll see that it's right there on the bottom. I want you to check it out. All right. Speaking of Twitch, from General Bean Dog, my dog Randy, what's up? Everybody, go go uh, go go follow uh, General Bean Dog. That's my dude, Randy, right there. He's he got me on Twitch. He set me up with all this shit. My man Bishop, that's family right there. So go check out General Bean Doggy. Man, what's up, motherfucker? Welcome, welcome. I'm glad we're doing that. We gotta we gotta like. We got a synergy. We got to get together and do some shit. You know what I'm saying? Like the same show, just roast each other the whole time. That's my man, Randy, right there. He's got fucking swag for real. But check out Factor for right now. Check it out. You've used the code FACTOR, S-E-48328. All right? Now, FACTOR, S-E-48328. That'll give you a nice 50% off here to Factor, and they can hook you up. So, again, we really appreciate them doing their Thanks. So we're rolling here on zero to 60. My battery life's dying. My dumbass didn't bring my charger. But hey, we're fucking 30 minutes in and we're rolling. So, so that's good. Look, when you talk about college athletes going to class, is it necessary? Yes, it's necessary. School's important. You want to, if you're going to sign up for something and do it, go do it. How you do one thing is how you do everything. But there needs to be a serious discussion about really what's expected here and why you're there. Let's just be real. Now, hopefully college football players unionize. Hopefully college football players elect somebody smart to be the, the union president. I hope they strike. They, you know, that they are really entitled to money for, from TV deals and all that other shit. Like, let's be fucking real here. It can't just be a scholarship anymore. Period. I mean, it, it, it and it needs to be more than just like back backyard handshake NIL deals as well. You need lawyers and agents and everything that the professionals have in every other sport need to be here as well, especially with football players, because we're a bunch of dumb motherfuckers and make bad decisions at times. It's just what it is. So I, I think that um, I think that if you just look at it from the perspective of, you know, they're here to play college football, well, then why the fuck does, do I need to go to a elective, like, you know, fucking history of jazz class what the fuck do i need to do that for so we'll see how it goes but coach prime's not too happy and the players need to stop fucking around in class but again like you know what what do you expect it's a bunch of young kids in the same class we used to have an astronomy class with joe romick and joe's obviously a college football hall of famer a bad motherfucker and a great at cu and it used to be like 25 players deep in the class and it used to be it just he was so angry at us all the time because it's impossible not to fuck around in there. You bring in food after practice. Everybody's all tired. Half the people fucking smoke before they went to class. Everyone's sitting there talking about astronomy and fucking with each other and making fun of each other. And Joe's sitting there like, hey, shut the fuck up. And he would email Barnett. We'd have to have sit downs and shit. But Barnett didn't have social media, so he couldn't bitch about it. So I'm glad that Coach Prime put him on blast. I think it's pretty fucking awesome. <clears throat> Mike Bundy, underwater basket weaving. Goddamn right, dog. General Bean Doggy, what's up, baby? Fucking rolling, baby. All right, so the 80-team Super Conference. How do y'all feel about this? Do you want regulation? I, you know, Regulation to me sounds like some soccer shit in Europe, and that's cool. But I will say this. Remember, Super Chats and subs are open on YouTube and Twitch, and we appreciate you. An 80-team super conference or an 80-team, you know, top of the fucking pyramid conference is where I want college football to go. Um, it's important because I'm not saying I don't want to play the other schools, but at the same time, if you maybe do that and add an extra game and every one of your games is against a power five school, bro, that is some, that's dope as fuck. And it levels the playing field. And then you don't have like UT Chattanooga going to Tuscaloosa at the end of the year to to play Alabama in the middle of November. And you don't have to like, I like the fact that Colorado's playing North Dakota state this year. It's cool, but I'd rather them open with Florida state. Cause I'm not trying to like, I want to win every game, but I want every game competitive. It's one of the reasons I wanted to go to see you back in the day. You know, the great doc crease and anybody that's, that's been at CU knows what I'm talking about. He was our strength coach. 
And the great Doc Priest always used to say, hell, son, I'll tell you, <clears throat> Colorado plays the best schedule in the country. We play Washington, Washington State, UCLA, USC. We go to Florida, Florida State. We play everybody. They come here, we go there. Colorado plays the hardest schedule in the country. And it's true. If you look at the years that I was there, bro, we have, fuck. My, my junior year, we it was, you know, Sonny Lubick CSU teams, which were fucking awesome, okay? So you had Sonny Lubick's USC uh, or CSU. Then we had, let's see, what was the next game? Junior year. We had CSU. We played Washington State at home. We went to Florida State, and that was all preseason and then started the Big 12 gauntlet. It, so, it, you know, my freshman year, we played CSU, Washington, uh, and then went to SC and then started the Big 12. Like, it, that's what the fuck I'm talking about. That shit is dope. So I think that if you're playing an, an 80-team super conference and everybody's playing each other at that at that level, more teams are going to lose. You're going to figure out who's really good and who's not. And it's in a 12- to 14-team playoff, that's some cool shit. Now, does it suck for some of the other schools? Yeah. But that's where the regulation part comes in. So do you like that? Do you like the fucking regulation? Do you like the fact that maybe your team could get moved out? Now, see, see you struggled back in the day. So I guarantee you they're going to be moved out, you know, in the Embry era or some shit. No offense to John. But at the same time, like moving forward in the new Big 12, I think Colorado has a chance to dominate the conference and be the best team in the conference. And I know I'm a homer, but that's the fucking truth, bro. Let's be real. Appreciate you, boss and Chris, 2024. I'm not that cool, but I'm glad you think so. Right off the bat, game over, 714 over on Twitch. We appreciate you, dog. Regulation is a much, is a must. Teach trash teams a lesson. You know what? I can't disagree with you, homie. I just can't. If you suck, you're out. Peace. Let's move it. Let's move a great team in from the group of five schools or whatever the other seventy some odd schools and see if they can compete and take off. I dig that shit, and and that's the way it probably should be. And you know, I I'm not saying that it's right. I'm not saying it's wrong, but it is something different. And that's just the way college football is going in a different direction. I'm already in a forty play. 40 player online dynasty mode in college football. And it's not even out yet. The hype is real. I cannot wait to run people off the sticks on the new NCAA. It comes out in July. I'm going to whip my kids' asses every day. I can't wait. Uh, all my boys, four girls, everyone, get ready to get ran off the fucking sticks. And now I don't have to come to your house to do it. I can just text you, get on, and whip that ass. I can't fucking wait. NCAA is about to be fire. And, you know, I'm sure it'll be similar to Madden. My boy, Clint Oldenburg, is one of the lead. Uh, designers for Madden and NCAA, and NCAA. So I got some a little bit of the backstory on what's going on. He's going to come on the show and talk about the game when they're ready to to do that. They're they're not ready to start doing media on it yet. But he's pretty excited about it, and so am I. And the fact that these kids have to opt in, and there's a lot of guys getting paid a lot to be on the game. That's the way it's fucking supposed to be. Uh, Six hundred dollars is a little cheap, you know. The Madden check in the NFL was pretty pretty good, about ten G's, uh, but. The $600 is a little cheap, and that's why you need a union. You need to negotiate that shit. Otherwise, EA Sports and whoever owns them is going to fucking give you 600 bucks instead of 10 Gs or whatever you should be getting. Let's just be fucking real. From my man Boston Chris, can't wait for NCAA 25. Neither can I, dog. Let's go. Watching and driving. This is not, that's not a good idea. Stop driving. <laughs> what are you doing, dog? Come on, Dave. Stop driving, David. Uh, yeah, so look, there's a lot to be discussed. We were going to interview Drake Nugent today, and I'm sorry we didn't get that done. He had to train this morning, and I'm not going to step in front of that. We are going to have him Monday. We're going to go a little bit later on Monday. We'll probably go about 1130 to have him on the Outstanding Center from Michigan that just won a national title, and it's going to be uh, you know, drafted this year into the NFL. Hopefully he comes home to Denver because they need to replace Lloyd Cushenberry. They drafted Forsythe out of Oregon last year in the seventh. I think Drake is a better player than him. Uh, but we'll see. I think Nugent could, is going to be a 10, 12, 15-year pro in the NFL. Knock on wood as long as he stays healthy. Remember, you can like and subscribe on YouTube, and please do. Like and subscribe on Twitch, and please do. Follow everything we do on uh, social media from TikTok, 
to Instagram, to uh, Twitter or X. We're on Cameo as well. If you need any tips or advice, I get so many inquiries every like day on TikTok, on Instagram. Like, can you give me tips? Go to Cameo, pay for it, and I'll give you tips, bro. But it, like the Joker said, if you're good at something, don't do it for free. And that's just what it is. So football's a business. And, and like I said, I'm a businessman. If you want my help, I am more than happy to do it. But go to Cameo and I'll give you as many goddamn tips as you want. Um, <clears throat> now, that said, uh, my computer is about to die. So if we just go black, that's the way it fucking is. Fade to black, bitch. Would it better be to fade away? We'll never know. So uh, everybody, please like and subscribe. We appreciate everything today. Um, you know, Coach Prime wants his guys to go to class. Spring ball's been pretty kick ass. The recruiting looks like it's on the up. So I'm pretty excited about the Colorado Buffaloes and the future. College football and the 80 team, Super League. Well, what are they going to do with the conferences? I guess we'll see. Uh, but you know, it, it is what it is. So look, have a great weekend. Stay, stay healthy, stay blessed out there. We appreciate everybody on Twitch and on YouTube watching. Uh, we're about to get down here. I got Tank and Mustafa coming in here in about five minutes, uh, and we will be on Twitch at 11 o'clock uh, doing the O-line, D-line workout with two of them. Mustafa plays for the Alouettes in Canada, just won a great cup. He's a bad motherfucker. If you knew Mustafa Johnson from CU, he was a three technique uh, there and was a, just it just it was and is a complete animal. And Big Tank uh, has been the starting left tackle at CU for years. And now he's in uh, at Corvallis to finish his last year and uh, continue his growth and, and development with Coach Devan uh, up there uh, at Oregon State. So they're both walking in. So if you want to continue to watch us here on Twitch, we're going to start that session here in about 15 minutes. Uh, and we like any and all involvement with that as well. So look, folks, really appreciate you. Have yourself a blessed Friday. Uh, we will be back on Monday with Drake Nugent and a bunch of good guests coming up here as we continue on zero to 60. So thank you for all the support and everything you guys do. Have yourself a great weekend and we're out.